Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Ya Rabbil Alamin, Wassalatu Wassalamu Ala Sayyidul Anbiya Il Mursalin, Wa Ala Alihi Wa Ashabi Ajma'in, Wa Man Ihtada Bihadihi Ila Yawmitin, Wa Ba'd. All praises and gratitude to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala for allowing us to be present here to conduct another session from the reminders of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from the compilation which was taken by Imam Nawawi Rahimahullah, the 40 Hadith. And today we will be going into our ninth lesson, our ninth Hadith, in which Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, narrated on the authority of Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Avoid that which I forbid you to do, and do that which I command you to do. And you do that which I command you to do to the best of your capacity. Then Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam continued, فَإِنَّمَا أَهْلَكَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ For verily the people before you were destroyed. سُؤَالِهِمْ Because of their excessive questioning. وَاخْتِلَافِهِمْ عَلَىٰ أَنْبِيَائِهِمْ And their disagreement with their prophets. So Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this hadith is very short and simplify hadith compared to the previous hadith that we did. Here Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he gave a profound advice, very short as usual. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, avoid that which I forbid you from doing. Do not go and do not approach that which I forbid you from doing. And that which I command you to do, do it with as much as best of your capability. Hasten towards it. Don't leave any, to, any stone unturned in carrying out that action. And verily, the people before us, people before the Ummah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they were destroyed because of the excessive questioning, because of asking unnecessary question and disagreeing with whatever the Prophet, peace be upon him, used to advise them and used to encourage them. Before we look into the lessons that we can derive from this hadith, we look into a background of why Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam instructed and why Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned of this hadith. Because it will help us to understand more profoundly of why and why Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi mentioned this statement and why is it important as Muslims that we follow the command of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wholeheartedly. So it is said, that during an incident, Rasulullah, this incident took place at the time when Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was admonishing the people, advising the people regarding Hajj, uh, about the command of Hajj, and we know at this time we are in a month, we are in the month of Hajj, in which Hajj is supposed to be started, and obviously people are being restricted from going to Hajj because of the situation that we are in. But nevertheless, it was the incident that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he was instructing the companions, telling them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded you that you perform hajj. So perform hajj, O servants of Allah. Then when Rasulullah SAW addressed that, he said, Allah has commanded you to perform hajj. Then perform hajj, O servant of Allah. A man stood up and he asked, he said, O Prophet of Allah, do we have to perform hajj every year? So the Prophet SAW said, that is when he mentioned of his statement that whatever I forbid you to do, Avoid it, and whatever I command you to do, do it as much as you can. In this hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he said, "Ma nahaitukum anhu, fajtanibu." What I prohibited you from, fajtanibu. In simple term, it, by just listening to this Arabic, any one with correct understanding of pronunciation will understand, "Ma nahaitukum anhu." Is completely different from Fajtanibuhu. It's completely two different words. The sounding is different. But yet we say, we're hearing the meaning to be the same. What I prohibited you from, stay away from it. Don't do it. Avoid it. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam here, he is telling us, he used the word Fajtanibu, Ijtinab. Not just to avoid it, but you stay far away from it. Whatever I forbid you from, you stay far away from it. You go far away from it. That you don't even come to the brink of even indulging and even encountering that 
forbid that thing that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam forbid you from. So Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam's command to us as mankind whether we have a reason or we know the reason for his command or not but once it has to do with Islam we are obliged to follow the command of what Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam given us. Now a question may arise is it not good to ask question if you do not know something yes the answer to that is yes it is correct to ask question if you do not know something but at the same time like i've mentioned at this time when this question was asked it the instant was a time of revelation in which rasulullah was passing the command of hajj asking too many questions about an obligation it can lead towards more complication it can lead towards more confusion For example, scholars have have said one of the reasons which may have made Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to object to this question is that it could have caused Hajj to be performed every year by each Muslim. If Rasulullah, when the question was asked, do we have to when do we have to perform Hajj or how often do we perform Hajj? Do we have to perform Hajj every year? If Rasulullah sallam had only answered yes to that question, then it could have been compulsory on each and every Muslim, you and I. every year in our life to perform hajj we may not understand that confusion and that complication that may arise so asking question is not wrong but however asking questions the right way is recommended that asking questions in such an instance which do not cause confusion it cannot lead that question may not lead towards more complication and may complicate the matter as much more than it is already those who pass through school life they may be able to even have a example or went through certain examples of that in their school life when they have a teacher maybe the teacher was mentioned of something but the teacher did not mention anything for example like an extra work a homework or an assignment and someone may raise the question as the teacher are we going to have a test based on this assignment or are we going to have an assignment for this work are we going to have something to take home then we all know what happens the teacher eventually gave an affirmative answer and agreed to what the student said and then everyone got upset at that one student it caused a bit more complication the reality is such we may ask a question because we want to know something but in a situation how we may ask a question at certain times it may lead into more confusion it may lead into other complication that we may not foresee So point to be noted asking questions are not wrong it is not wrong and it is not prohibited in fact from one of the hadith when our very beginning we learned the hadith the jibril the hadith in which jibril alayhi salam came to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to teach the companions and how did he teach the companions he did not went as an instructor he did not went in a video he did not went in front of a gathering and was lecturing to them or was advising them in fact he came to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam present himself as if he's a student and he asked questions he asked questions so that they are those around him can hear so that those around him can learn the companions in the presence of rasulullah sallam can learn so asking questions in fact is as good question that leads to knowledge questions that lead towards goodness these are things that are encourage these are aspect of questions that are encourage and is like by by people even in the environment that you're in regards to knowledge but what is prohibited in this regard or what is discouraged in this regard a question that will lead towards confusions questions that will lead towards chaos in a community or questions that will lead people towards doubt so for example like asking questions about unnecessary details these are things that is discouraged these are types of question which is discouraged from people asking so Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam coming back to the advice that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam told us that whatever he told us to do whatever he command you to do then you carry it out and whatever prohibited sorry what at the beginning Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam prohibited you from you abstain from it you stay far away from it it must be to such an extent that forbidden act shall totally be abstained by muslims even to an extent in any pathway that lead towards that act even though we may not have the intention that we want to indulge in wrong but any pathway that will lead towards that wrong act or that forbidden act we should stay far away from that pathway also so that we may not be we may not have any slip or we may not have any sliding 
or we may not have even a tiny bit of entrance of leading in towards that haram act or that forbidden act from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One significant characteristics of Islamic law and Islam is its flexibility and its pra and practicality. practicality. One's capability of carrying out and doing good actions to one extent. For example, regards to Hajj, we know Hajj is compulsory, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the Quran, telling us about Hajj, Walillahi ala nas hajjul bayt man istata'ilahi sabila. That Hajj is compulsory towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's house, towards the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is compulsory upon the believer. But for those who has the means, for those who the pathway has made easy, for those who can afford the expenses. So the flexibility is there. Another aspect of flexibility in regards to Islam is that praying, in praying salah, a person is traveling. When a person is not traveling, if he is at home, he is his resident, he has to perform the five times daily salah. He has the number of rakats that he has to perform for Zuhar, Asir, and Isha salah, four rakats each. But when a person is traveling, the flexibility is there that he can shorten this salah from four rakat, it becomes into two rakat. So Islam does have that capacity of flexibility, but again, it towards it is towards one own capability and one capacity of doing good deeds. Because in a similar manner, Islam encourages one to do carry out good deeds. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa command is only towards doing things and actions that are good, and action that can benefit one in this life and in the hereafter. And if we were to neglect the command of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and we were to fall in the forbidden acts and the prohibition of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then we are only to we are only going to destroy ourselves, we're only going to destroy our own deeds, and we're only going to destroy our akhirah here our hereafter and our everlasting time. So we utilize that flexibility, but we utilize it in our best in our best manner, in our best way, that we can gain good deeds and we can gain good action and reward so that we can record our book of deeds correctly and it may be a means of benefit for us. But at the same time, as much as we carry out good deeds, we do not burden ourselves, as Allah Subhanahu wa said, "La yukallifu Allah nafsan illa wus'aha." Allah Subhanahu wa doesn't burden a soul except with what he is capable of having, and we exert ourselves as much to our strength in carrying out the action. So everyone will not be on the same level. Some parts will have a capability and may have the strength to carry out action much more, and they take the burden much more. And based on this issue, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also mentioned, and he said, O oh, people, perform such good acts or perform such action as you are capable of doing. For verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not grow weary and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not get tired, but you are the one that will get tired. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always there and he's accepting your action. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not get tired of accepting action. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not, is not the one that will tire themselves, is not the one that will weaken themselves. In carrying out the action, you are as mankind, we are insane, we are weak. So, Rasulullah said, Carry out good action, carry out such acts, and according to your capability, in moderation, as much that you can manage. Don't force yourself that you know, Alhamdulillah, I start praying five times a day and I start fasting every day out of Ramadan, but you carry it out for two weeks and after that you're done. Go step by step, and gradually you will build. Similarly, anyone that starts driving, they don't just jump in a car and a vehicle and start driving at 100 miles an hour. In fact, they go slowly but surely. They know that they will get it gradually. So similarly with our action, we start off slow, but we build on our moderation and we build to our best of capability. It all takes effort. Nothing comes without effort. We cannot achieve that high rank and that high peak and that high position except with effort. You have to make that effort from below to gain towards that capability and that capacity. So similarly as Muslims, if we are not used to carry out good action, if we are not used to make sacrifice on ourselves in doing good acts, in doing obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, obedience of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then to just start in the blink of an eye, it will not be easy for us. We have to make the same step, we have to make the sacrifice and build gradually towards the stairs, toward upwards in the stairs, in the ranks. In short, understanding and practicing these principles, these very few and short principles which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam advise us, it will lead us in living a better and a practical life 
and it will help us in fulfilling our obligation in the correct and in the right manner, in the right way. And applying them into our life will help us and lead us towards loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, loving the ibadat and the worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and appreciate the mercy and the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He bestowed upon us. And with this, I close and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He bless each and every one of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the understanding. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the capability, the strength, the open heart that we can accept whatever His Rasul, His Messenger, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, advise us towards whatever He prohibited from us from, we abstain from it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our heart that we can get an understanding of His beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam words and his beloved Quran and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to grant and grant us a correct understanding and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for all our affairs may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for all the Muslims across the world may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to bless us and increase us in knowledge Jazakumullah khair Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh